Yacht navigation in the digital age seems simple and very reliable. Accidents should be a thing of the past, but some yachts still manage to get it wrong. We're going to see how we can avoid navigation mistakes and make our sailing safer and a lot more enjoyable. Many training organisations like the RYA choose to teach traditional navigation methods, which they claim is safer. The problem is they are not teaching digital navigation, which is what we all use. Well, I've done it both ways and I love modern digital navigation. When I started offshore sailing, I used the same methods as the old sailing ships. Nothing had changed for hundreds of years. I built a yacht in the mid-1970s and sailed to Bali and back. Navigation in those days was challenging. Very satisfying when you got it right and terrifying when it went wrong. I'll quickly explain how it works. From your assumed position, the sun sight gives a position line on the chart. After an evening sight, you have a long dark night when you just estimate your position from your course and distance sailed. By the morning, your position accuracy would be about five miles, but the next sight should give a reasonable fix. But bad weather changes everything. Sun sights are not as accurate in a small yacht and a heavy sea, and dead reckoning is less reliable with variable winds. Heavy cloud can obscure the sun, bad visibility can prevent a fix from the shore. Traditional navigation can leave you many miles out of position. There are hundreds of wrecks littering our coastline and I didn't want to be one of them. In the digital age, some racing yachts still only have one navigator and no chart plotter on deck. This was the cause of the wrecking of the Greenings in 2017. She was a clipper round the world yacht which sailed onto the beach south of Cape Town. Nobody was navigating while everyone was on deck trimming the sails. Racing yachts have a tactician, a very skilled art with a lot of equipment, but navigation for safety is different. It's easy and should involve all the crew with a chart plotter in front of the helmsman. I spoke to some of the clipper crews after the accident. They said they were not qualified to navigate. This accident was caused by an old-fashioned approach with the instruments only available below deck at the chart table. Most of us are much safer now. We can keep an eye on navigation while looking out, trimming the sails and steering. The original GPS units just gave a position to plot on the chart. Amazing at the time. Then 20 years ago, we bought our first chart plotter and saw the moving display on the digital chart. But the biggest breakthrough was 10 years ago with the arrival of Navionics for the iPad. For the price of one or two paper charts, we now have access to thousands of charts all over the world. The iPad is a convenient and safe backup, in my experience more reliable than the chart plotters, which can fail due to problems in the yacht's network. To be safe, it's absolutely vital to have at least three devices. On our yacht, I've counted eight devices capable of navigating, including a few old phones and iPads I keep charged up. So I have no concerns about equipment failure. Navionics works well offline, but first you must download the area, shown here in white. There are three GPS systems. The world is so dependent it would take a serious situation for them to be unavailable. Traditional navigation has so many ways to go wrong. It could be bad visibility, a faulty speed sensor, or a simple calculation error. I was navigating the old Ann Judith in a severe gale. Both wheelhouse doors were opened and our charts blew off the chart table and fluttered downwind. By far the greatest cause of navigation is when nobody's navigating. It just takes a few minutes inattention at the wrong time. On our yacht, we obviously have chart plotters on deck and with Navionics on the iPad, we always have two of us navigating to avoid silly mistakes. Navigation is part of the fun of sailing and if we have guests, 
Everybody likes to see where we're going. These days, GPS can reliably fix our position to within a few meters. The charts are not so accurate. We need to be constantly looking out for dangers and are not in the expected position. The Guardian was a US minesweeper which was wrecked on a reef in the Philippines in 2013. What's the position of the wreck, the red mark? It's on the reef in the detail chart, but shows six miles offshore in the wide scale chart they were using. It takes a couple of seconds to zoom in. It's negligent not to do it. They were relying solely on one faulty chart, whilst the lighthouse was working and the reef was visible to some of the crew. Never blindly trust the charts. Always keep a careful lookout and use radar at night if you have it. The Volvo 65 Team Vestas Wind was a similar accident when she smashed onto the reef in the Indian Ocean in 2014. The navigator had checked the wide scale chart, which looked safe, but hadn't zoomed in to the detail chart. He was asleep at the time of the grounding and nobody else was navigating. Like the clipper yachts, this accident was avoidable if the helmsman was using a chart plotter on deck instead of relying on one navigator at the chart table. The clipper yachts have a history of navigation failures. The yacht Cork was wrecked on a small island in the Java Sea in 2010. This was due to a chart offset. To understand this accident, we need to look at the history of digital charts. They started as a copy of paper charts, which came from a variety of sources, British, local or even Russian charts. They just digitized and published the best available. The old charts were surveyed before GPS and most had positional errors due to limited accuracy or possibly using the wrong datum. A good example was this small bay in Greece 20 years ago. We motored in visually and anchored, but the chart plotter track showed we were over the land due to an offset in that chart. That night, a strong wind blew straight into the bay and we had to get out. We carefully followed our original track, even though it went over the hills. Always have your track showing on the chart plotter. Now, most popular areas have accurate detailed charts, but this can give us a false sense of security. Often the wide scale charts still have big errors because they haven't been updated. Also, while the shoreline has been corrected with satellite photos, outlying shoals and rocks could still be up to one mile out of position. Never sail close to an offshore obstruction unless you can confirm its position. Back to the accident with the cork. Their turning mark was a tiny island in the Java Sea, north of Jakarta. The yacht had 16 crew, but only one navigator. He plotted their course earlier in the day to pass half a mile off the island. When they got there, it was dark, rough, and the light wasn't working, but he didn't adjust his course for safe clearance. He was on deck and not navigating when they got there. The island was one mile out of position and they struck it at full speed. This was an avoidable accident, but we're all at risk. We all make mistakes, particularly when tired or stressed. The safe solution is to have two or more people navigating, checking one another for bad decisions or inattention. I've sailed in the Java Sea myself. The charts are inaccurate, the lights often don't work, and I give the many dangers a very wide berth. Radar is really useful to confirm chart accuracy and to keep safe. Adjust the gain carefully and it will clearly show breakers even if there's no solid land behind. You may be able to overlay the radar on your chart. This is a great reality check on a dark night. Tide calculations are a slow and complex process the traditional way, but it's actually really easy. With Navionics, just press Menu, Weather and Tides, and select the nearest station. Tides are also available on your chart plotter. Mm, you may need to read the instructions. Learn the buttons for adjusting the brightness on your chart plotter. At night, you can get completely blinded by a bright plotter and can't see how to turn it down. 
In the morning, the plotter will look like it's dead. If necessary, put a towel over your head so you can see how to turn the brightness up again. Do you know the buttons for the man overboard display? Make sure your crew know. It could save your life one day. These 12 volt chargers are not really powerful enough for a tablet running Navionics. If the battery goes flat, it may not charge and run at the same time. You may need to turn the unit off, charge it for an hour, then turn it on again. The course over ground line shows where the boat is actually going, allowing for leeway or currents. Navionics shows it all the time, but you may need to activate this vector on your chart plotter. Look at this chart. The ship's heading looks safe, but the course over ground is aiming for the rocks. This was the Costa Concordia. The captain was steering visually. He was doing a turn and didn't realise the ship was actually skidding sideways. 32 people died, not the captain. He was one of the first off when he accidentally fell into a life raft. If you're arriving into a new area, do your planning well in advance. You'll be busy when you get there. We use pilot books, navionics and satellite photos. Each of them helps to build up a good picture. Satellite images are very accurate and can show a sandy bottom to anchor. OK, thanks for watching. Good sailing and keep well clear of the rocks.